Welcome to the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Podcast. My name is Natalie Nidham. I'm a nutritionist, a human potential, and epigenetic coach, and I created this podcast to bring you the latest ways to take control of your health and longevity. We cover it all, from new technology to ancestral health practices, personalized interventions, and a very special interest of mine, peptides. Enjoy the show. Welcome back, guys. Today's episode is a doozy. Today's guest wrote a book last year that I think made a lot of people very unhappy and certainly went at some of the most deep-rooted beliefs that we have around building a better body. The book is called Why Weightlifting is a Waste of Time and So is Cardio and There's a Better Way to Get the Body that You Want. So you can just imagine telling a bunch of people whose entire existence revolves around lifting heavy weights that they're wasting their time is not a really, not a great way to make a lot of friends. But it turns out he's got the science to back it up and he's created a system that can prove it. And the system is called the X3 bar. And the X3 bar, if you haven't heard of it, is a variable resistance system. And what that means, it's a very fancy way of saying these are very special, but very specific, imagine giant rubber bands and a mini weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting bar and a metal platform that you stand on. And the most amazing thing about this next to the part about how you can build lean muscle in 15 minutes a day is that this entire system that I described fits into a yoga bag. It can fit into your carry-on bag. It's the most portable system it's the most time efficient system and it's the most efficient way to build muscle and safe. And it's safe. Can you believe it? Anyway, so I would say that the timing for this thing could not be better. We're, you know, in the middle of a pandemic here. Hopefully we're at the end of it, but access to gyms has been disrupted. And a lot of us have also just figured out that we love working out at home. So if you're one of these people, you definitely want to hear this podcast because this system could be the answer because we need muscle. Why? We want to look good, but we also want to age well. So whether you're in it to build a ton of new lean muscle or whether you're just in it to get stronger so that you can live better, this episode is for you. And this system I'm telling you is pretty freaking amazing. So Dr. Jake Wish um, has a great website, which is jakewishbiomedical.com. You can also join their Facebook community, which is X3 Bar. And um, if you want to buy the X3 bar for yourself, if you believe that this is something you want to try, you can go to the show notes, get the link in the show notes. And from that link, you can use promo code SAVE50. And that will save you $50 off your X3 bar. So as always, if you get benefit and value from this episode, please make sure that you share it with your family, your friends, your networks. Um, and also leave us a review. Send me your comments. Let me know what you think. I love hearing from you guys. I get so many great comments all the time. So number one, it keeps me going. It makes me, it helps me to know what you like and what you don't like. And also it helps me to get more amazing guests on the podcast. If you're looking to connect with me, you can find me through my website, which is natnidam.com, N-A-T-N-I-D-D-A-M.com or you can find me on Facebook in the Optimizing Superhuman Performance Group, or on MeWe, which is the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Group. And you can also find me on Instagram, which is just my name, natalienidham.com. And that's Natalie with an H, N-A-T-H-A-L-I-E-N-I-D-D-A-M.com. And uh, do I have anything else I need to say to you? Oh yeah, this podcast, like all the other podcasts that I put out there, are really for information and purposes only. And especially when it's coming to using new supplements or taking on a new fitness routine, you want to make sure that you check with your health professional, your doctor, your trainer, when it comes to fitness, make sure that this is right for you before you go jumping into something new wholeheartedly. I mean, we often, we get super excited about these things. We just want to jump right in with both feet, but it's never a good idea to do that until you've made sure that this is right for your body and for yourself. All right. So enjoy the episode. I think before we go to the episode, we're going to hear about our sponsor. We have a sponsor for this episode. Um, and I, that's a different spot. So I'm just going to let her rip from there. 
Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate you guys and enjoy the show. Hey folks, before we launch into the episode, just one thing, we have a sponsor, drinkhrw.com. This sponsor is all about the magic of molecular hydrogen, and they make the most incredible molecular hydrogen products. They make molecular hydrogen tablets that you can easily just drop into your water every morning as you start your day. They actually even have flavored ones in raspberry flavor, if that's your jam. I like mine uh, plain with a squeeze of lemon, but I also love the raspberry. They even have tablets that you can drop into your bath bathtub to soak to get a whole body treatment of molecular hydrogen and tablets you can drop into a bowl of water and apply to your face. And so you might be sitting there wondering, so big deal, why would I drink hydrogen? I mean, hydrogen is the smallest molecule on the periodic table. Who cares about hydrogen? Well, let me tell you, you care about hydrogen. A lot about what we talk about in this podcast is about health span and lifespan. It's about aging well. It's about longevity. It's about managing your body system so that you can look, feel, and perform your best. And molecular hydrogen delivers on these points like nothing else does. Think about this. Molecular hydrogen actually combats oxidative stress as well as supporting a healthy inflammatory response. Now, we know that inflammation is at the root of virtually every major disease out there. We also know that it help, it makes us basically age faster. So I would qualify molecular hydrogen as a preventative aging supplement, and it is one of the easiest healthiest, best out there with zero negative side effects. It indirectly mitigates the damages of those three issues that ultimately lead the way in virtually any disease state and fundamentally is are the driving forces in why we age. We're talking about imbalances in oxidative stress, in inflammation, and as well as increased insulin resistance. So you don't really have to take my word for it, guys. You can go to the drinkhrw.com website, and I'm going to tell you that it is one of the most incredible repositories of research and articles all about molecular hydrogen. And you know what I love about this company is they don't just run around telling you how great molecular hydrogen is. They don't just cherry pick the best research articles. They're full on, flat out, pretty honest about this article, this clinical trial. Well, it didn't show us much yet. Here are the flaws in it, or here's what we think. It's an incredible resource, but I can tell you that Whatever it is that you're dealing with, there's probably a clinical trial going on somewhere um, looking at whether or not molecular hydrogen can be helpful. And I will tell you that in my practice, I've seen it be helpful to all kinds of people, people who are suffering from joint pain because molecular hydrogen is able to target inflammation, because it's able to support a healthy um inflammatory response in the body. And it also promotes antioxidant and oxidative balance. You guys, you don't want to just be taking antioxidants by the handful. You want something on board that's going to help to keep you in balance to not too high, not too low, just keep you in that Goldilocks state. So like I said, I have clients who were blown away about how effective this molecular hydrogen, taking it every day, sometimes soaking an injured joint in molecular hydrogen water, what a difference it made in their mobility and in their ability to recover um, from their injuries and even also, of course, from workouts. So you're gonna be hearing me talk a lot more about molecular hydrogen in the future. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I encourage you to go to drinkhrw.com forward slash superhuman. And you can use promo code longevity10, and that will get you 10% off everything that you purchase. And you can try molecular hydrogen for yourself. And by all means, reach out to me and let me know how you liked your molecular hydrogen experience. And by all means as well, please, please, please check out their website. It is one of the most incredible resources that I've seen for molecular hydrogen research. So thanks for being here today, guys. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the show, Dr. John Jaquish. It is a pleasure to finally meet you. Hey, thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah, so now that we've gotten geography figured out, so I was convinced for some reason, I was convinced Dr. Jaquish was in sunny Florida. Instead, he's in sunny, sunny West Coast USA. Um, mm. But 
you know, what can you do? At least I had the sunny part right. No. Um, so Dr. Jaquish, I am so excited to talk to you today because I've had the X3 bands since at some point. Bar, last- you had X3, it, it's a bar. Bar, the sorry, the X3 bar. Uh, oh my <laughs> God. Right. But the, it's ba- the bands, the the bands, bands are like worthless it. without the bar, by the way. Worthless. Right. Right, yeah, they'll break your ankle or your wrist. Well, except for on the squats. I find I can't use the bar on the squats, but we can talk about that afterwards. It hurts. I don't have big giant muscles. Like you're going to you're gonna dislocate a shoulder using it just by wrapping it around your arms. Uh, well, I almost popped my head off one day doing the tricep extension wrong. So then I had to go back to the video mm. and rewatch that. So yeah. I've, I've, all the people who, all of my clients who have bought the X3 bar, have Mm -hmm. gotten detailed instructions from me on how to do and not to do the tricep. The, and and, then yeah, just give them the video that that, that I did. Yeah. Well, and the, and the, the, there's a video recently, we are so off topic for the intro of this episode, the video (laughs) recently that you posted that describes it as a skull crusher is the one that drove the message home to me ever since Ever since yeah, I because the bar that, ends up right across the bridge of your nose and you press you know, down. And I kind of lean forward no. a bit. Yeah. And and, uh-huh. and then yeah. the and then the the um, the band doesn't roll off my shoulders or up into onto my neck. So. Right, but the only reason the band <laughs> would move at all is because you're putting slack in the band, which is an improper use. Right. So by turning the muscle off and letting the muscle relax, you, when you have slack in the band, that actually denies hypoxia. So there's a huge growth factor that you're missing. If you huh. allow any slack to get in the band, you need to keep constant tension the entire time. Okay, we're coming back to that. But first, okay. let's talk All about right. you. <laughs> let's okay. talk, why don't you give us like the Coles Notes version of Dr. John Jaquish and how the heck you are sitting there on that beautiful couch talking to me today about the X3 bar. What's, what's your journey? How, how did you get here? Were you a weightlifter ever? Now that no. you, well, now yeah, you I mean, the book, I lifted weights. Weight. Now that you say right. lifting is a total waste of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was always athletic. I played division one rugby in, uh, in university. And so uh, I did wrestling, swimming and track in high school. So I was always athletic, but I was a pretty slim guy. Uh, I think when I graduated high school and started college, I was 135 pounds. So really small. Uh, I was six foot, but just skinny. Um, Interesting, because rugby players usually are pretty solid guys. Otherwise, they get their ears torn off their heads. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I got beat up on pretty bad, but That's it's good. okay. I'm tough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, 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 I took it pretty well. And I ended up through my rugby career just putting on body fat. And so I ended up being a little bit bigger but not a lot stronger. And uh, what really got me going on life sciences was when my mother was diagnosed with osteoporosis. So I had been lifting weights and I had been interested in fitness, but not from a professional perspective. Uh, And then my, my mother's diagnosed with osteoporosis and I started looking into it and I said, well, you know, children build high levels of bone density and then they spend the rest of their life losing it. Yeah. Uh, so why don't we look at where bone density comes from, who has the highest bone density in adulthood and how I can replicate that. So that was like my, what I told my mother I was going to do. Uh, and I, I figured it out. Like it was pretty easy. Uh, I did a literature review on who the people with the highest bone density were. And, you know, I was just searching and searching and searching. And who are they? And, uh, well, the gymnasts, right? I think I got that. That's from right. They're gymnasts, gymnasts. And it's because of the rate at which they hit the ground. Right. They contact the ground at multiples of their body weight. So that, you know, incredible forces they're receiving. Mm-hmm. So well, sometimes 10 times their body weight. So I told my mother, I'm going to build a device that's going to emulate high impact. It's going to give you the benefit of high impact without the risks of injury. Right. And so, you know, she was like, well, it sounds great. You know, she didn't have to do anything. Uh, so it's just to wait for me to put this together. Now, a lot of research in biomechanics. It took me years yeah. to get the prototype together, but I did. And within 18 months, she had the bone density of a 30 year old yeah. and she was in her seventies 
while having the bone density of somebody in the 90s. So then she went all the way back and basically took 60 years of bone loss and reversed it. So it, it ended up being very beneficial to her and uh, in such a short period of time. And then I built a better looking prototype, opened up, opened up a, uh, a clinic yeah. and started, started treating people. Right. And I, I couldn't make very bold claims because there's no, there's no clinical data on it yet, but uh, I can say, you know, we're, we're doing this for bone health mm-hmm. instead of bone density or osteoporosis. Got to be careful when you use what? Still to this day, you can't mention that it's a bone. Oh, no, no. We've, we've had data. Now. Okay, so had now you have data. I thought so, yeah. So now, now we say, yeah, we can, uh, we say potentially address osteoporosis because it's effort driven. You know, if somebody is not ambulatory, is not fully ambulatory, they can't apply enough force to the bone to trigger the bone to grow. Right. It's sort of like a muscle, you know, or, or some people are just lazy. They just don't want to do it. Uh, and you see that and people, people go into a, a fitness <laughs> location, a gym, and they, they pedal about one tenth as hard as they could. They don't break a sweat and then they walk out and then they're like, how come I'm not losing weight? Yeah. Well, yeah, right. Well, there's 10 different answers to that question, all of which show them that everything they're doing is wrong yeah. and based on misconception. But, um, w- so this device went very well, and then now I'm getting it all over the world. Tony Robbins is a partner. The company's called OsteoStrong. Yeah. And there's 100, 150 clinics in eight different countries. I mean, except uh, for my country, which we need to fix, by the way. So, sign yeah, yeah. There's nothing, exactly nothing in Canada that. yet. Okay. That has to change. <laughs> uh, I'll help you with that. All right. Well, we're, yeah. we're melting like everybody else, honestly. And mm. so, so on the bone density issue, like you still, there's other lifestyle factors that come into play with bone density. There's nutrition, there's, you know, so how, what, I mean, I kind of wanted to ask you this question anyway, like what, mm. there's no getting around that without the loading, you're not going to improve right. bone density. Yeah. Nutrition, it. nutrition gives you building blocks. Okay. So, then so the- it's sort of like a weightlifter takes protein. Yeah. Extra protein. And then they lift weights and then they grow muscle. Well, why don't they just have the protein and not have anything to do with the weightlifting? Well, nothing, nothing will happen. Right. So you need to do both. And there, there are many foolish people on the internet that say it's like all about diet. No, it's not all about diet. It's all about diet. As long as it's all about putting the proper stimulus on the body to use the nutrients. Of course. So anybody who says it's one or the other is just a complete fool. Well, you know, the way I explain it to people is the human body is inherently crazy smart and it's not going to expend energy building something it doesn't think it needs. And so Mm -hmm. the stimulus is ultimately the giving the body reason to build muscle or bone because muscle is, is super expensive from a metabolic perspective. And Mm -hmm. Why would the body expend a huge amount of energy building bone in advanced years if it doesn't think that it needs it? So, right, you just got to give the body a reason. It has to have a reason, right? So now, yeah. it's possible? Like, I'm pretty sure I saw a study recently that maybe your name was on. That maybe you participated in some research study with this little organization mm-hmm. called NASA. Something about uh, density. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah, so <laughs> some scientists from NASA uh, just recently published an article in the Journal of Aerospace Medicine and Human Performance. And uh, what that determined, it was a case report looking at bone turnover markers with the use of my impact emulation devices. So uh, they saw an over 40% increase in the rate of new bone creation and and an over 40% decrease in the loss of older bone. Wow. That's amazing. Tremendous differences. And and the best part about those blood markers is they show a trend. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the the problem with DEXA is DEXA is just a picture and you're taking an x-ray slash picture of a, of a bone but it really shows the outside of the bone more than the inside of the bone. And what we're affecting is more the inside than the outside. 
Because yeah. the new bone cells are created and mature and build uh, a, a matrix around them of little walls. You see, you see the cross section of bone looks like somebody cut into a honeycomb. Yeah. And you see all these little open spaces and then, and then walls. The, you have more walls and thicker walls in, in that of a high bone density person versus a low bone density person. Interesting. Okay. Mm. So, and of course, NASA has a vested interest in this because they send people out to space, their bone melts, right? Like the, the loss of gravity really costs them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it melts. Well, it, I mean, it, uh, dramatic, it degrades, right? it degrades pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm just being, yeah. I'm, I'm just being, yeah. just as it were. It be becomes more porous. But, well, because without the gravitational pull of the Earth, uh, the bone has no reason to maintain density. Yeah. But then they can still fracture. No kidding. Yeah. So we want really fracture resistant astronauts. And that's, that's the whole discussion. I spoke uh, on a panel a couple of years ago with some astronauts talking about the feasibility and the challenges of getting an astronaut to Mars. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turns out that from a life sciences perspective, because really we, we know we have the machinery to get there. We already put a, a roving, a roving vehicle on Mars and it took a bunch of pictures and then we didn't hear anything else about it. So I'm pretty sure it's broken. Yeah. Uh, or, or maybe the pictures are so boring. It's like, all right, the yeah, first day of pictures and the last day of pictures are all the same. I don't know. I don't know what, what ended up happening, but generally, you know, organizations like that, they don't, they don't brag about broken equipment. So funny how that works. That costs yeah, millions yeah. of dollars. Okay. We're yeah. sidebarring now. Okay. So Ostia Strong, great system, bone, super important, but next to yeah. bone, what's the next big organ we need to take care of here? And well, the, the funny thing is uh, the number one organ in our body that we can affect the most is skeletal muscle, yeah. muscle that moves us around. Yeah. Um, like you really cannot dramatically affect your cardiovascular system, like your heart and your lungs. There's little differences uh, between like endurance athletes and non-endurance athletes or sedentary people, small, small adaptations of the lungs. Now, what really helps runners the most is just dropping body weight. Usually they're losing muscle uh, to get to a lower. Yeah. Yeah. And so they just get a look to a lower body weight and they increase their endurance by lung adaptations, uh, cardiac adaptations, but, but also just getting used to a cadence and a breathing pattern and things like that. And those are, those are more neurological changes than anything, but you can't like triple your, the output of your heart. Right. You, you cannot do it, but you can triple the amount of muscle you have. Yeah, for sure. Most people have very little muscle. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, there's, I'm sure there's some weightlifter that hear me say that. It's like, no, you can't do that. Well, yeah, you can't do that now because you already did it. Yeah. But, uh, right. But you know, for the untrained person, yeah, they can, they can change musculature to a great degree. And then once they do that, they have the opportunity to really, uh, really affect the other systems of the body. They've changed their metabolism completely. Their, their glucose management is super efficient Yeah, when they put on a, a significant amount of muscle. And this is men and women. By significant amount, I don't mean you're going to look like me with a wig. Uh, you know, ladies out there, unless you want to, I can I mean, show I, you how to do that. Too. Women that, that want to be swole. That's okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. Um, but a but, lot but, of women are afraid of it. Is my but, point. but talking about muscle as an endocrine organism, it's, it's, it's a foreign concept to most people. And yet, mm -hmm. right. It's, it's one of the most powerful ways we have of managing glucose efficiently. You're basically giving, your glucose a place to go. You're creating. It's really the only way. Again, your liver can hold how yeah. as glycogen, like a, a tiny bit. Yeah, and, it, and it's not going to increase its capacity no matter what you do. Whereas no matter what, bigger muscle is going to have mm -hmm. bigger storage, right? More capacity yeah. to, to right. do that stuff. And I was actually right. talking to someone else recently who was talking about um, anti-inflammatory compounds that are produced by muscle. 
that exercise. She was talking sure. about myokines, right? And when yeah. people get injured and they get told to go home and sit around and do nothing, and it's ex essentially exacerbating a situation, yeah. a condition, right? Because yeah. you can yeah, yeah. access to... Anyway, so let's talk about X3. So osteostrong, bone density. How did we make the... So you made the leap to X3 saying, what's, what's my next project going to be? Because I'm going to be bored or... No, not at all. Not at all. I, I, in fact, I, uh, I had to do some real reflecting when I, when I saw the data coming out of the osteo strong, uh, uh, the first sort of, it wasn't a randomized controlled trial, but you could call it a, a clinical trial, what we did in, um, in London. Uh, so when I was in London, uh, <clears throat> I participated from a methods perspective and a training perspective of the principal investigator and his team and how it would be applied. So you want to make sure they don't use the device incorrectly. Sure. Because then it's, you could hurt people or, or you, you know, maybe have a study that doesn't have any results. Right. So like we know it has results in the clinics. So let's, let's see it in a, in a, in a clinical testing environment. So what, what I ended up seeing was data of bone loading where <clears throat> Postmenopausal females were putting six, seven, eight, nine times their body weight through their hip joints. Nice. Now, that's weight that even professional weightlifters wouldn't lift in full range. Now, this wasn't in full range. This was in a very specific position of where you would absorb high impact. So I thought, God, the impact ready position is so powerful. And the other positions of a movement are so much weaker. Mm -hmm. Like, like we have from like when I do a, a chest press from the bottom where the bar is on my chest to when, when I'm at extension where the bar is far away from me, I have a seven fold difference of power output capability. Right. So you think about that yeah. seven fold difference. So that's seven times weight. You would never get it off your chest. Of course not. If it was down here, never. you'd be crushing. It would it. probably crush you. Yeah, you'd yeah. probably just die. Yeah. Uh, but now that I had this information, I felt I had to do something with it because it, it seemed like, like I have evidence that shows like weightlifting as a stimulus to grow muscle is terrible. Mm -hmm. Like it just doesn't make sense. And and uh, I, I saw a quote from Peter Atia later where, uh, you know, Dr. Atia yeah, is, right? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a great podcast. Um, a great podcast. Yeah. Uh, he said, um, what I don't like about weightlifting is it overloads joints and underloads muscle. Yeah, it's a great. And I was like, yeah. And, he, and I heard that and I was like, wow, this guy's thinking about the same thing I am. Just, he just so clearly defined the problem. Yeah. And I, like his attitude was, well, you know, I just don't really like strength training that much for that reason. And I'm like already working on a solution to the problem he outlined. I just didn't know he had outlined. It. So okay. I was like, wow, like this guy, he really gets me. And so by the way, Peter, if you're listening to this, uh, you know, invite me on podcast and we can talk about it um, i wish that peter and tia was listening to my podcast to be clear <laughs> that would be that'd be cool all right well yeah i've been saying that on podcast recently so I, at some point he'll be like god yeah. the guy said my name like hey it's like a personal message uh so uh he's just a brilliant guy and he's he's talking to all kinds of people at a very high level and he does a really good job of boiling it down so the regular person can understand it Yep. Like he, he gets people who write research that maybe only 10 people in the world can understand. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter because as long as those people do understand it, medicine is going to move forward. Yeah. But he takes that information and he makes it relevant to everybody else. Sure. Whereas they themselves as researchers, they're not good at that. Not so much. We all have our. No, they're actually told to be so thorough. Like I know, I know when I did my PhD, it was like everything was about the detail. And I would say like, gosh, I'm never going to use this 
stuff to market anything. Like nobody's going to read this. And they're like, oh, somebody will. Well, and if they did, they won't understand it. Okay, let's get back to the yeah. problem at hand. Okay. So, so creating X3. So after I had this data, I realized we need a weight that changes as we move. Kind of like band training. But the problem with band training is the band twists the smallest joints in your body, the wrists and the ankles. Yeah, I always. remember using those. I used to be a fitness instructor and I remember using them. We had the bands with the handles on the ends and you were yeah. always limited and you're limited actually by the weakest link. The wrist. Which is your wrist. But it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. That's why we use Olympic bars. I see. Yeah. That's why we stand on a flat piece of ground. So if you try and do a deadlift with a really heavy latex band, mm -hmm. like an X3, because we make the heaviest bands in the world, uh, as far as I know. Um, I use it. So, yeah. I dig but it. if you take one of those bands and let's say you try and step on it and then do a deadlift, you could break an ankle. It only takes seven pounds of lateral force into the ankle to snap the ankle. Hmm. Ask anyone who's played in the NFL if ankles like lateral force. No. They don't. That's what ends their careers. That and knees. Usually. So you really have to stand on the plate. Because I, I have to admit, I do. Yeah, it, it, the whole it. product is worthless without the plate. You uh, need it. Okay. Yeah, and the bar. And, and so, like, when some people just, like, they see my product and they just start training with bands, and they're like, yeah, well, it didn't work. Right, because you can't get heavy enough to be relevant. And that's another thing, I think, the whole fitness industry. I, I have very little respect for the fitness industry. Um, they've been pushing incorrect messages, um, you know, cardio for weight loss. That was disproven 40 years ago. And there's more than 100 studies that show that. Yet, you walk into any big box gym and you'll be told the cardio is for weight loss. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, well, it is. Yeah, it's just it's wrong. Muscle, you'll lose your muscle. <laughs> right. Yeah. As you get bigger, right. <laughs> as right. you get more voluminous, you will lose your muscle. Um, right. Okay. So listen, why don't we back up a second? Cause it's possible mm. that there's people listening to this who don't actually know what the X3 system looks like. I call it the system because to your point, it's a, oh, it's a system. I like that. That's it's good. a combination of an Olympic mm -hmm. weightlifting bar, which is, you know, manageable. I mean, the beauty of the, there's so many different beautiful things about this whole system number one that it's portable so yep. you invest the money once i like bounce between my you know my lake house and my city house in the summertime i just throw it in a yoga bag and up up and down it goes with me kind yeah. of. um sure. so we've got the olympic weightlifting bar with the groovy hooks on the end that that spin and you'll explain to us why ergonomically <sighs> that totally makes sense you've got four bands unless you're superhuman like you and then you have a fifth one and then there's yeah. there's a ground plate that to protect your ankles, which I may or may not have missed that in an explanation at some point. So I'll admit to sometimes doing an exercise with my foot on the band, um, which I won't do ever again, for real. Thank you. Um, and then you have a, this cool ground plate, which doesn't look like much, but yet it's super stable that you're going to use to wrap your. Yeah, band. the bands can freely move underneath your feet. Yeah. And so they're not going to jerk an ankle one direction or the other, like just stepping on a band. Well, they're and also equalized, right? Because if yeah, everything equalized. Easy, it'll always be even between your right and your left. If you've got yeah. your foot, you can never really get your feet. Anyway, it, we don't have to talk about doing it wrong. Do it right. Use the platform. Mm -hmm. So this is what you have. You have an Olympic weightlifting bar. You've got a series of four different bands that represent four different right. tension. And you've got a plate underneath. Let's talk about this amazing workout, which is literally 10 to 15 minutes a day. That is like the most efficient workout I've seen. And I, you know, I've, I have been part of that fitness industry. Yes. I did do that thing called teaching aerobic classes at some point. I've been there, done that, but you know, I'm old enough that it was okay. We didn't know better at the time. I retired a long time ago. Um, but let's talk about the, the, the exercises and how adaptable it is to so many different populations, because you know, like we can talk to the very fit population, but the people I like to talk to as well are people that are not fit and have to, we need to get them to understand that this isn't necessarily, I mean, yeah, we all want to look good in our, in our jeans and our swimsuits and this and that. This is about your health and longevity. This is about being able to live an amazing life 
Right. Long after you're past your supposed prime, it's really about extending our prime into our 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond, right? Right. So yeah. it's about having functional strength. So let's talk a bit about what this routine looks like and how is it possible that 10 or 15 minutes could do the work? So I'll answer it in reverse. The 10 or 15 minutes, that it wasn't an objective to be efficient with time. It just happens to be that the body responds in the greatest manner with an adaptive response, uh, meaning like a, a, a callus on your hand or a suntan. Yeah. Uh, it's an adaptation of the body to make an adjustment for the environment that you are in. Well, when it comes to stimulating a muscle to grow, it's the same thing. It's like the most intense stimulus in the shortest period of time. So what, what the product does is it takes you to a level of fatigue that is impossible to achieve with weights uh, mm -hmm. because you're, you're using the appropriate weight in the appropriate position. So, and you also go higher repetitions. So, you know, when I'll do a chest press, I'll use a hundred pounds at the bottom where my joints are weakest and then I'll use 300 pounds in the middle. Now, this is all in one repetition. As I begin to stretch the latex, it goes from 100 to 300. And then when I'm almost at extension, you don't go to full extension. Never lock. Because uh, that, that, that locks the joint and, and just loads the bone. It, doesn't, it turns off the muscle. You don't want to do that. So um, when you go through that, I'm dealing, I'm dealing 550 at the top. 300 pounds in the middle and hundred at the bottom. So I do however many 550 pound reps I can do. And usually that's 20 or 25 or something, somewhere in there. And then I can't get there anymore. I have fatigue, but I can still get to the lower area. So I can just do half reps, which are 300 pounds. And then the last repetition, which only is like an inch, I can only handle hundred pounds now at the bottom. So it's Which for most people, it's like, so it's a level of fatigue that somebody who bench presses 200 pounds uh, for 10 repetitions with a regular bar would never be able to get to because they still have plenty of strength left over mm -hmm. uh, at the top. But here we, we kind of turn it upside down and we're, we're just using an appropriate load in this specific position. And so the level of fatigue is so much greater. You only need to do one set. In fact, the reason we do multiple sets with weight training is because the stimulus is garbage. Right. Totally sucks. Right. right. So like how many sets do you need to do in the sunlight to get a tan? You know, I asked that question and people were just like, you just go out in the sun. Right. Yeah. You just go out in the sun once. Yeah. Like you don't need to go in and out. You don't need to like let your skin rest and then go out again. Like, no, there's none of that. Just, Go outside, and then when you, you turn a little pink, just rub some sunblock on yourself. Or you can be like me and just refuse to do that and just be perpetually sunburned, which I am right now. Uh, it's okay. I like it. Um, I like dry skin. All right. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I just don't I, – I don't like being sunburned, but I'm usually pretty good at, like, wearing hats and stuff now. Uh, but what I really don't like is the carcinogens in, the, in sunblock. <laughs> I know. Like I can't, I can't advocate for sunblock because it's just a just chemical garbage. Yeah. Well, there's yeah, mineral blocks yeah. that are a bit better, but I, I, I gotta find where they sell those because I went to Whole Foods the, oh, the no, other day. I can give you the name of one. There's actually you know, okay. There's a oh. really good site called um, There's the Environmental Working Group org ewg org. They have a database okay. called Skin Deep, um, and on that database they will rank sunscreens but i i will send you the name and i'll put them in, and put it in the comments of the sunscreen i found last year that was quite good and it's, it's just a mineral based sunscreen so it doesn't have all the thank you that's what i need all right I uh, yeah i it's that's what i need yeah all right, so um x3. <laughs> right back to the x3 so putting all these things together i knew i needed to make a consumer product I knew, I, I knew what the requirements were and needed to handle incredible forces. And so I basically had to custom make everything. Um, all the, so mostly when they say something's American made, 
it's really American assembled with Chinese parts. Yeah. Um, yeah. With X3, everything's made in America, with the exception of the bands. The problem with the bands is um, they, they are tree latex. And tree latex uh, it's grown in a tree. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's like a, the, the rubber tree. Yeah. And the problem, problem with that is we don't have enough rainfall to have enough of those here. Okay. Like, yeah, so the bands are from Sri Lanka. It's oh. really the only place you can get you can get uh, latex, and yeah, and I'm I'd like it to be more sustainable, and I have some plans in the future to uh, do something that is. I mean, it is an environmentally friendly process, but I think latex should be used for surgical. Right. gloves right. and condoms i guess uh as opposed to i mean hey you know let's keep keep disease spread down so and we're all thinking about that now anyway right so uh have you seen yeah. an uptick in sales this year i'm sure you have like you must have yeah this this you know <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah. it's been really bad for a lot of people but i would think that in your business it's been the silver lining on a really shitty year <laughs> <laughs> we were we were already doing so well, you know, like doubling the size of the company in very short periods of time, all the time. And then when the lockdown started, uh, what ended up happening was serious. First, first thing that happened was serious athletes, elite athletes yeah. started coming to us. And I was already doing all the strength training uh, programming for – the Miami Heat. In fact, they endorsed my book. Um, it says right on the back. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I saw book. that on the back. Yeah, and and you know, it's really rare that a team lets you use their name. Like, if you write, you just use a regular person, you make a blog post about, you know, some NFL or NBA team, uh, you're going to get a cease and desist letter. Like, they don't like that at all. Um, well, I, ha- I may or may not have seen pictures of a certain quarterback who had, a, you know, who's a bit of a achieving legend status training with it could only be your stuff (laughs) yeah well so there are some athletes who are just cool guys and girls and they they let me use their pictures uh and all all they get in exchange is a personal connection to me so they have a serious question or their physician has a question about how exactly X3 works or, you know, let's say they get injured and they want to reintroduce them to exercise with yeah. X3 and they call me and ask me for advice. So they get my personal phone number. That's all they get. They get no money. Uh, there's about 30 athletes on the website right now. And these are, these are pro athletes. Yeah. Uh, there are some pro athletes like maybe the person you were describing. I have to say his name. I know I'm not. Uh, okay, so, so uh, but that guy, him. that guy, you know, I, I'd prefer you not to. Okay, I won't say but, his name. Uh, yeah, that guy, you know, he's um, a, a lot of uh, professional athletes. They use it, but, you know, when I, I call him, I'm like, hey, I'd love to help you out. Like, I see you're using my product. I can answer a bunch of questions. And the particular quarterback you're talking about, you know, he wanted half my company. Yeah. And it's like, no, like. No. For what? Like, yeah, you have a big brand, but you don't think X3 is going to be bigger? And like, like you know, who, who's who's bigger, Michael Jordan or Nike? <laughs> Sorry, Jordan. It's Nike. Jordan doesn't care, I'm sure. Uh, oh, no. And why, why would he? But my point is, like, you know, the personalities, especially when they retire, you know, are, are they still relevant? Maybe. Um, as long as they don't do anything embarrassing, I guess. Uh, yeah, you know, as long as they don't, uh, you know, get caught with uh, anything. I feel like when you sign your NFL contract, there's somebody in the room that's like, here's your complimentary bag of cocaine and an illegal gun. Please keep this right next to you in your car and drive erratically. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, it's like, it's like they all make the same mistake. Come on, guys. Yeah. Like, uh, and, and I need to be figuring it out. I, I almost think they're set up like, like there's like, like law enforcement, like follows them around and okay. 
<laughs> he signed his contract. Definitely has the bag of cocaine and the gun. All that right. is not registered. Back to X3, as you mm-hmm. your giant lemonade or Fortigen or whatever's in that. It's Fortigen. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. You should see the smile. It's a giant Fortigen. Oh, yeah, it was. <laughs> it was full. It was right to the top when I started. It was. I got you. Mm. I broke a dry fast. Oh, nice. How long did you yeah. go? And let's talk, and we'll talk about fasting and and working out with X3. Also, I want to talk about that. So uh, it, it was about uh, eighteen hours. Eighteen nice. hours dry. Yeah, it's long enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so back to our X3 mm-hmm. program. We have two sets of exercise. We have push exercises and pull exercises. So you're going to do right. one day. You're going to push. You're going to do your chest press. Uh, yep. You're going to do your overhead um, shoulder press. You're going to right, do, yeah. right. You're going to do yeah. the, triceps and calves. Triceps and calves took me a yeah. long time to figure out the calf exercise, but I got it. Okay. Um, okay. And then the other day, you're going to do you're going to pull. You're going to do deadlift. You're going to do dead row. You're going to do your bicep curl. Bent over row. Bent over row. Bicep curl. Yeah. And my favorite, the squat or the split squat. Right. That's Which are actually pu- pushing muscles, but you know. I was going to say, those uh, don't, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not exactly pulling through uh-huh. that. Yeah. Uh, well. And so is actually, it actually appropriate for people to do both in a, like, do you ever get people that do both in a day? Oh, yeah. Push, pull together? Yeah, people who say like, I'd rather do like a half hour workout with three times a week. Yeah. Or a 20 minute workout three times a week. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Like. I wouldn't like doing that because I feel like I've been hit by a train just when I, you know, do half the body. Like it's hard. That's, that's one thing that I I, I caution like X3 is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing is, but it's a quick workout. It's far more effective than anything you will find in the gym. Far more effective. However, it's hard. And generally the reason Generally, the reason so to work. Right. Um, consumer products typically have a 30% return rate. Mm-hmm. So 30% of the product they sell, they get back. Uh, you know, and then they sell it as used or, or demos or whatever. Um, we have a 1% return rate. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like people see that when we're, we're talking about it. I mean, even even like finance people and they're like well that can't be right one percent right and the reason it's one percent is because people use it and they see results immediately Mm -hmm. so they keep it they love it um but the most common complaint when they return it is it was too hard yeah i can see that yeah and it's like nobody ever said it was easy like it's fast (laughs) it's very efficient but I've never called it easy. Yeah. And so, and, and then it's funny because you get the return and then you notice that only the lightweight band was unwrapped. So they tried the lightest one and it, they, they could barely move it. And so they're probably extremely deconditioned people. But to me, it's like it, where you are right now doesn't matter. Yeah. It's where you're going. So like I tell them, I tell Tell the guys who are coming out of, let's say, undergrad, they're right out of university, they're primed to grow a lot of muscle. The same thing I would say to the 500-pound, 40-year-old man who can barely get get out of bed. Uh, Like, where you are right now is just irrelevant. you got to become a better version of yourself every day when you use this thing. And uh, and also the 500-pound guy has a little further to go. But if you see, if you look at the the users forum, yeah, are you a member of that? I am. Okay, yeah, the users forum for X three, twenty seven thousand people in there. There are people who are fit and become extremely fit, and there are those, you know, they have three hundred pounds of body fat to lose. And they're getting there with the product. The, the product also uh, very aggressively upregulates growth hormone, so let's which talk a aids bit about that. in lipolysis. Yeah. 
Yeah, the 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 hormonal benefits. So testosterone, growth hormone. So it affects like a bunch of hormones, right? It affects insulin. Yeah. It affects growth hormone. Yep. Testosterone. So let's let's maybe talk about that because I think what you're what you're talking about right now is so important in that it it can it it is adaptable mm. to such a huge range of people depending on what their goals are. And different populations are going, well, I guess everybody uses it the same. They're just going to get different things out of it, right? Because you've got your mm -hmm. you've got your deconditioned people that are kind of athletic, but then you get that other, like people who are either very overweight or who are so deconditioned, like who are in their 40s and 50s and haven't seen the inside of a gym in forever. Right. I would say the exercise protocol is the same for everybody. Yeah. The nutrition may be different. That's, you know, like there was this trend a couple of years ago and I think it was started by personal trainers or maybe some personal trainer certification organization where it's like, I'm, they, they say, I'm going to build a custom program just for you, mm -hmm. for your goals and needs. I think that's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard <laughs> because it's like, everybody wants to be leaner and stronger. Nobody ever comes into a trainer and says, yeah, I, I want to get fatter. No, but they might like I want to get a little a little weaker and a lot fat. Like <laughs> nobody needs help doing that. No. Like that's nobody needs a custom program. It's all the same. You everybody wants to be leaner and stronger. Now, if you have a biomechanics issue, like some people can't raise their hand over their head, they may only be able to get it here. Okay, you might need some physical therapy to to get that mobility back. But that's not really a custom program. You just need some therapy. Mm -hmm. like so i just always thought that concept was so irritating <laughs> uh there, it's just it's just do it right like do do it the way it's supposed to be done everybody will do better and uh if you need something special it's not customized it means you have something that's just dysfunctional and let's address that right Right. Yeah. So basically what you're saying is this should be well within the bandwidth of any functional body should be able to, yeah. I mean, these are basic exercises at the end of the mm -hmm. day, there's nothing. These are, these are really, yeah. I mean, they're basic functional exercises that if you can, there are, there are much more comfortable and safe approach yeah. to a lot of standard barbell movements. Yeah. So like, you know, the problem with the overhead press when you're doing with weights is when you're in the position where your shoulder joint is basically progressively being destroyed by holding a heavy weight right here versus here where you can actually handle it. Like, and you see people kind of, you know, like drop down and then push their body weight up to get momentum. It just shows that you're handling a weight that you shouldn't be holding. So what do you do with people who can't manage the, the white band on the shoulder press? We tell them to get a lighter band and we have a band provider. Oh, you do? Because the yeah. shoulder is, in my mind, one of the weakest, it, like next to the wrist. Or, I mean, or you can rotate. you can do it from your you can do it from your knees. Yeah, but then it's too light. <laughs> no, no. I mean, just start like you know by you know getting on your knees on the platform, and then because it shortens the stretch. So how much, how much, uh, how many reps should you be able to do of each exercise to say that that exercise is not too hard for a person? Cause you talk about doing 25 to 40 reps like you, but you know, it's 15 to 40. Yeah. You know, like what if yeah. a person can do 10 full reps and now have to start diminishing the range? Yeah. Then, then they're going, then they're using too heavy a band. Okay. Yeah. And they need to go down. Interesting. Okay. Um, all right. Well then let's, let's talk a bit about you. You know, what's cool about the book people is that it's not just about X3. I mean, it talks about X3 talks about the science behind it, why it works, how it works, how it supports your strength. But then it goes into all these other cool things like, Oh, I don't know, like nutrition, for example, yeah. which yeah. you wouldn't necessarily expect in this book because Mostly what it's done is poke the bear and said, weightlifting is a waste of time. And by the way, right. just for the rest of you, so is cardio. So, you know, that's right. But then you get into nutrition, which I love because, you know, the expression, you can't work off a bad diet will never 
it'll never get old as far as I, and I'm a nutritionist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah. like nutrition matters. Like, it's the building blocks. It's, it's like I said earlier, just about the bone density. Um, you, you just can't build anything without the building blocks. You know, you can have, if you, if you're going to build a house and you don't have any wood, well, I guess you're not going to build a house. Well, or not a good one. Yeah. <laughs> right. You can't, can't make it out of nails. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, I, and, you know, I landed on a protein, an animal protein based diet. Uh, I didn't have any biases when I, when I researched this, if, if the research had shown me that veganism was the way i'd be a probably the most annoying vegan yeah <laughs> I, I know yielding <laughs> yeah yeah it would be hard to be the most annoying vegan because even they they, 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 they got that they're all really annoying so it's a, uh it's a tricky space i will i will grant they, well they're is, very emotional they tend to get very emotional about their beliefs and you know it's 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 often it's a it's a choice that's made from emotion versus from from scientific basis i mean you make the point very well in the book there are very yeah it's things. it's how children make make decisions or babies yeah i understand um the uh, it's funny like i don't ever stand in front of a vegan restaurant and say they need to shut down because they don't serve a good burger i'm with you like, right and, and also by the way vegetable farming kills 7 billion animals a year Absolutely. in the United States. So like you have a field that used to be a habitat for a group of animals. They keep coming back to that and they get chopped up into the till or, uh, you know, where they're tilling the field or, or whatever. So or, or birds like birds get poisoned by the millions. Yeah. Uh, because they'll, they'll go into a cornfield and pick it clean. Yeah. And so whoever owns a cornfield, I mean, it might be an honest farmer or, you know, like, I think everyone wants to imagine it's some like evil company. And it's just like, no, this guy's just trying to feed his family. So. Well, and he's been told that this is the only way to do it. So. Right. Yeah. Anyway, right. we digress. So basically mm -hmm. your research, you've moved to a gone, you've moved to a meat forward um, mm -hmm. diet. Do you need, are you full carnivore or do you eat some vegetables? Uh, I don't eat any vegetables. Okay, so you now this is bacterial fermentation. Vegans can eat this. There's no animal products in this. Yeah. This w when we started the show, this whole thing was 200, uh, 200 grams of protein equivalent. So guys, it's very efficient. Just in case I don't end up putting up the video of this, uh, Dr. Jaquish is holding up a. It looks like a beer stein, only it's the size of a pitcher. So right. Right, like it's that's right. Yeah, a full pitcher of water, but it's the yeah. shape of a beer stein, and it was when we started talking completely full to the top, um, with this pink drink, which I correctly what is Fortigen. Yeah, you knew exactly what it was. Yeah, it's uh, it's four doses of Fortigen, so, which is an essential amino acid blend that um is just going to provide the body with the building blocks now. What's interesting yeah. is you're saying you're coming off a dry fast. So you do also talk about fasting in the book because it yeah. is a very powerful way to manipulate and manage your hormones around workouts, yeah. frankly, just for life and for health, right? Also, just let your intestines rest. Yeah. Like there's never been any evidence that more meals means you live longer, but there is evidence that less meals. Yeah means you live longer. So uh, I really didn't have a horse in this race, you know, caloric restriction versus um, fasting. And I think a lot of people think it's like one or the other. I, I think not eating like a, can I use profanity on your show? I don't care. <laughs> I've never been you, like, Caloric restriction pretty much means just don't eat like a fucking hippo. And, you know, and fasting means you abstain from everything. But then sometimes when you finish your fast, somebody starts eating like a fucking hippo. So <laughs> you have to keep both of those things in mind. Both can do amazing things. I do think if you were to 
score the results. Uh, I don't think I have scientific evidence that backs this up. So like I tell, you know, people are like, what's your opinion? I'm like, well, I don't have an opinion, but I can tell you what the science says. Uh, and that's what it boils down to, right? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, uh, what a long time restriction can do, uh, fasted is, is this, it just enacts systems of the body that never get enacted otherwise. Right. Like so, a- yeah. And, and there's, and there's emotional decision makers on this subject as well. Cause like, like fitness people, especially bodybuilders, they think you need to eat like every two hours. Yeah. No. And that, that's been out there for so long. And that just seems like a good way to get Crohn's disease. Well, it's just, uh, it's, it, or IBS. Well, and it's a good way to never uh, ever be able to achieve any degree of metabolic flexibility. It's just no. not, you know, you want your body to be able to flip through. We have two fuel systems we can use. We should be able to flip between them. That, right. That, right. That would be, that should be a goal and it should be where right. we are. And that way, you also can choose when you eat, when it's available to you. And when you don't eat, so you no longer have that thing where you're telling someone, well, I had to have the donuts because there was nothing else around and it was time for me to eat. If we are metabolically flexible, we don't need to eat at any given time. We are able to. Right. (laughs) We've also done something very strange as, as as a species in that we surround ourselves with a ridiculous abundance of food. Sure. Like if you and I were in a tribe in Toronto, how often would we eat plant-based materials? I don't know. Pro- probably about one month out of the year. Yeah. A couple which months. Would be the year. end, the end of the end of the warm season going into the cold season. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only time there would be fruit or any vegetation that would be edible. Yeah. And the rest of the time, we just be carnivore the rest mm-hmm. of the year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's just no other way around it. And um, I mean, fruits and vegetables only, only bloom in that general window of time. Now, when you're in a warmer place, that window gets a little bit bigger. But uh, it's, it also coincides with the idea that bears – give themselves type two diabetes every year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. It's, it's, and, and, and so I, I mean, this, in this learning this and I'm trying to understand why they do this, they're using type two diabetes to get fatter quicker. Yeah. So because they, they want to store the fat so they can hibernate. Right. Yeah. And so basically my theory on carbohydrates, carbohydrates, by the way, are not a macronutrient. Right. This is a, Fairly recent discovery, though. I'm the only one that seems to be saying it so blatantly. Um, and it's in the book, guys. Talk yeah. About, talks about it in the book. Yeah. You don't, you don't need them. Uh, there's ways you can use carbohydrates if you're an endurance runner to enhance your performance. If you're using X3, there's a way you can use it to enhance performance. I call it the hyperplasia protocol. Yeah. So let's, uh, talk, let's quickly, because we don't have a lot of time. Can we talk a little bit about um, X3, fasted workouts, not fasted workouts, and using carbs time strategically around the X3 workout? I just want to share that with the listeners quickly before we go. Sure. Uh, boy, that's 20 pages of really hard science you want me to summarize in a minute. Yeah, but you're the man. But you can do this. You're coming so basically, <laughs> carbohydrates force you to retain uh, four to five grams of water per gram of carbohydrate. Yep. Uh, because, uh, glucose comes into the body and then it gets paired with insulin and it goes into the muscle through the upregulation of glute force signaling when it's needed. So what you do is you have your carbohydrates and then you work out and then the glucose picks up the insulin and then goes right into the muscle and forces a super hydration of muscle. Nice. When this happens and then you stretch after your workout, and I'm talking about a maximum stretch, like you want some discomfort in the stretch, yeah. uh, you will actually be splitting muscle cells, something that was previously thought to be impossible. So this is more of a permanent growth. 
huh. of musculature. So like getting and, muscle cells to clone each other almost? Like they just split in two, they divide? Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, hyperplasia. Yeah, the studies have been done on birds primarily because you can stretch a bird out and they have a really great pain tolerance. A bird? Birds, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a human ethics board won't sign off on uh, on a lot of these types of things. Like putting somebody in a stretch muscle position for 24 hours. Okay. Yeah, like they won't do it because it's like torture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, how do we apply this to our workout though? Because we're not going to stay in a stretch position for 24 hours. Well, we stay in the position for less yeah. a period of time. So I, I recommend a stretch for 30 seconds per target muscle you worked out that day. Okay. Uh, so, you know, 30 seconds is a lot better than 24 hours. I, I, I do think at some point I'll try like six hours or something like that with one particular target group just to see just to see what happens. Okay. Uh, I also have, I have a, a level of discipline that uh, others don't. Yeah. So yeah, I, I may give that a shot because that, that may be an interesting learning experience. Also our biochemistry is different than birds, stuff like that. But um, it's just, it's just very interesting <clears throat> data that when you look at it all together, you, you can really enhance because basically by super hydrating the muscle, you create less room in the muscle. Yeah. And what happens is as you stretch the muscle and it's filled up with, with more blood and sarcoplasm than it normally has, that the casing around the muscle is being stretched. When there is empty space within the muscle, that's generally because a certain set of things happened, like we're talking about, have happened. And therefore, there's room for the cells to split because they're trying to recover and... Uh, not just become stronger cells, actually cellular division. Right. So then you would eat that carb, you would consume the carb source, whatever it is, pre-workout? You can do it pre or, or immediately post. Right after? Yeah, I, 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 I'm starting to think pre may be a little bit better because your blood's moving so hard and you're breathing so hard and you're gulping water down at the end of a workout. Sometimes people complain of heartburn. If they, you know, they have, they have rice, which is like, it's not acidic or anything. No. And then they get heartburn. And I'm like, well, that's, that's interesting. So it's probably better to consume it beforehand. So kind of either way, it's got to happen. You can't, you certainly can't do it during the workout. That's guaranteed heart. No, well, no, that's, uh, that's yeah, yeah, thinking yeah. eating constantly to the next level, eating during your workout. I think that would just be a bad idea. Well, I see, I see a lot of people, there's, there's products that are supposed to be like a carb hit. Uh, well, there was one a couple of years ago, it failed, but uh, the, the whole idea was you're supposed to have, and it was a concentrated carb mixture don't know if it was really good or bad. It could have been high fructose corn syrup for all I know, but um, you want it to absorb fast. Right. Which, right. which is why, you know, that like, like a fast absorbing carb would be better. Right. But, um, you know, rice, there's not a lot of cellular structure there. So it, it does, it does get in your, in your bloodstream pretty fast. Yeah. So you want this. Okay. You want this to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but just because we can use the carbohydrates as a performance enhancement doesn't mean that they're a macronutrient. We don't need them to survive at all. Right. Right. No. Yeah. And I think for, for the average person, it's not necessary. Right. It's, yeah, that's right. It's, 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 it's kind of like that thing about how you get people who don't do anything drinking Gatorade supposedly to never mind the fact that Gatorade's crap in the first place, but yeah, <laughs> but you know, which was meant for yeah. expending colossal amounts of energy so that mm -hmm. there's that somehow you could sort of make an argument for it. <laughs> yeah, barely. Yeah, I, something like that. Anyway, that's a whole other topic. So I think we're running a little long on time. I think that you 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 got to go um and i want to thank you for your time today and for taking the time to talk about x3 with us this is great it was really nice to meet you i look forward to talking nice meeting you and um 
Yeah, I have to go. Um, maybe I have to get a lighter band for my overhead press. <laughs> Just try doing it from your knees first. I will. I Instead will. of standing, kneel on it and then just the same movement like normal. Okay. So how can people let, give them some link? Let's give people some links. Shall sure. We? Sure. I, I created a landing page because there's like 10 places you can get a hold of me or watch my videos or whatever. So it's just a website, drj.com. Oh, nice. uh, D D O C T O R the letter J.com. Nice. That's uh, and everything is there. Instagram, Facebook, links to the products, links to the book. And the other thing you have, the other thing I want to say to people is you have this great YouTube video library that walks people through a 12 week program using the X3 system, which I think is, you know, for people who aren't accustomed to working out is a really great, you know, it's having you as a trainer in your living room or wherever it is that you're doing your workout. So mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's a really great resource as well. So thank you again. Um, it was a pleasure to meet you. And um, I look forward to hearing about people's experience with their X3 system. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Thank I'm you. sure we'll speak soon. Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to leave us a five-star review on iTunes because that's what helps us to be heard and to be seen. If you'd like to connect with me directly, or if you'd like to leave any comments, or if you have any questions about this episode, please reach out to me directly through my website, natnidham.com. And of course, if you're not already a member of the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Community on Facebook, that's where you'll find me every day. It's a short application. Just answer a couple of questions and you're in and interfacing with other amazing biohackers. Thanks again. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode.